away so I can get back to my guests. First of all, let's get the power on. You need to get at least the bottom four plugs on. Right, let's load up the adverts. You know, load the tapes under the desk. Look down. You might want to have a bit of a think about it. Your decisions have consequences, don't they? Dogs have their own secret language. Yeah, the one that mistrusts the moon. Ten seconds, everybody! Not the best source of consumer advice, then. Don't blame me when it explodes, going in five, four, three. It's time to go over to Jeremy Donaldson for tonight's national. Good evening, I'm Jeremy Donaldson. Our main headlines tonight Destination Unknown. At the end of Advance's first full week in office, we ask exactly who's leading this charge. Tonight, I'll be discussing what the new future might hold with a leading economist and radical free thinker. With the assets and wealth back from the United States, <laughs> 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 the vast majority of the country, and 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 Gives us a sense of this influential young firebrand who, at the tender age of twenty-four, becomes the youngest female CEO in history. Sophia Remington has always impressed. She was top of her class in school, and in the Royal Academy, she was top of her class in school, and in the Royal Academy, she was top of her class in school, and in the Royal Academy, she was top of her class in school, and in the Royal Academy, she was top of her class in school, and in the Royal Academy, she was top of her class in school, and in the Royal Academy, she was top of her class in school, and in the Royal Academy, she was top of her class in school, and in the Royal Academy, she was top of her class in school, and in the Royal Academy, she was top of her class in school, and in the Royal Academy, she was top of her class in school, and in the Royal Academy, she was top of her class in school, and in the Royal Academy, she was top of her class in school, and in the Royal Academy, she was top of her class in school, and in the Royal Academy, she was top of her class in school, and in the Royal Academy, she was top of her class in school, and in the Sophia announced a children's toy named Mr. Snugglehugs. Sophia promises it'll be all the rage this Christmas, but concerns have been raised about the product safety. Making a splash, intrepid scientist Dr. David Wong and marine biologist Ingrid Swarsborg and Horgensford have today set off to explore Dante's Taint. The recently discovered cave system was previously thought unreachable. But thanks to a new breakthrough in underwater flower technology, the pair hope to successfully reach the imposing central cavern and the undiscovered plant species it contains. Many were surprised that the two scientists, who shared a fractious rivalry for many years, decided to undertake this expedition in each other's company. However, the two have released a joint statement in which they opine geniuses don't have to like each other to achieve remarkable results. Playing the field. Rumors are back that sporting legend Johnny Hamsleeves is snapped leaving Bush, one of the capital's hottest clubs. The footballer was caught while out celebrating being the sports personality of the year last week, as reported by this very program. And judging from the angle and velocity of that spray, it looks like Johnny may have been celebrating a little bit too much. I certainly wouldn't want to be his dry cleaner. And grievous bodily charm. With advance promising a radical new position on crime, how afraid should we actually be? I'll be going live around the country to talk with people who've seen the criminal justice system from every perspective. With more and more people saying they're scared to walk the streets alone at night, could this be exactly the right time for Advance's new approach? All that, a mega move for the group of young actors already experiencing the positive side of the new Assets and Wealth Act firsthand. They'll be talking. And performing later. That's all coming up on tonight's National Nightly News. Back, everybody, can we get the guests in quickly, please? Yeah, sure. Make the book. Government.
Ireland's swift enactment of the Assets and Wealth Act, we're talking about advances first week in office and what the new future holds. Joining me are Katie Brightman, a leading economist, and Alan James, author of Alan James is Right, The Free Man's Guide to Waking Up. Alan, the government certainly haven't dragged their heels on delivering some of the legislation they promised. But what does the Wealth Act mean for us? Nothing, Jeremy. We're still vassal slaves, we're just in prettier cages. A confident dismissal there. Katie Brightman, do you agree? I'm afraid I don't, no. I think that Vance have realised that the current economic system of unlimited, unending growth is untenable, so they're changing things up. There I agree with you. They're moving to the next steps in the grand plan. Grand plan, Alan. It's all in my book. Alan James is right, Jeremy. We're to become the great herd. Ignorant, sterile and short-lived. That's what they want. Or perhaps Advance have just realised that if we carry on the way we are, we will destroy ourselves and this planet in a mad orgy of consumption. If you'll excuse the colourful metaphor. <laughs> yes, orgy is the right word. Only it'll be the overlords having an orgy on our poor broken backs. It's all in my book. Alan James is... Shamelessly self-promoting. Katie, how do you think the rest of the world will respond to this new approach? I think they're watching carefully. Katie's right. War is inevitable. And this will not be a war like we've ever seen before. We're talking millions of deaths. We're talking high-tech weapons that can level entire cities. We're talking out of the wrong orifices. Mock me all you like, Jeremy. But when they murder your parents and they poison your food and they take you away to their camps for hypno brainwashing, we'll be laughing then. That might be a great way to sell books, Alan, but you know full well that isn't going to happen in democracy. Democracy is dead. Yes, advance are radical, and change is always frightening. But the truth is that the Wealth and Assets Act has made more than 90% of the population wealthier and is on target to produce a permanent end to poverty. Bollocks! <laughs> what this young lady doesn't understand, Jeremy, is that these are the same people. Maybe they've rebranded, but it's all a little circus act to keep us from seeing the tyrant behind the curtain. That's where you're wrong, Alan. For a start, they've mobilised the youth vote like we've never seen before. You say mobilise, I call it grooming. The grooming of an entire generation to walk happily into eternal bondage. They're like psychic paedophiles. But based on the facts, Katie, what are your predictions? The Assets and Wealth Act is only the first step. Advance now have a historic budgetary surplus, and as well as properly funding our public services, they're already un they're already funneling unprecedented amounts into scientific research in the arts. Or, as I call them in my book, Franken Science and Opie Arts. Like opiates, see? Can we get back to the issue at hand, please, Alan? This is the issue. It's all coming from the water, the chemicals, they're pumping it full of belief juice. Don't get me wrong, I want to see these changes, but only if they're sustainable. If Advance lose their power after spending half of our GDP on dismantling infrastructure, that could be catastrophic. The catastrophe is that they're succeeding. They've got us sat here talking about their puppet show. All right, we're running out of time. Quickly, Alan, um, what does the future look like to you, Alan? A bleak space where we've all been figuratively sodomised into submission. <laughs> Katie? We might be on the eve of a brave new world. God knows we need some change, but we need to be cautious. Let's walk forwards with our eyes open. Two very different visions of the future there. Alan James, Katie Brightman, thank you for joining me. When we come back, I'll be investigating law and order before Megan meets some beneficiaries of the Assets and Wealth Act. That's all coming up tonight on the National Nightly News. One minute back. You know, I think they might do some good. I hope so too. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
They're going to be taking a deep dive into the state of law and order in our country. Advance have already tasked what they are calling a solutions team to move this serious social problem to the top of the Tonight, we go behind the headlights to make the people who live with the criminal justice system every day of their lives. First up, we have Gregory Judge, a lawyer who sees the problems close up in the front. Can you hear me, Gregory? Can you hear yes, me, Gregory? I've got you, Jeremy. Thanks yes, for I've got you, Jeremy. Like Thanks for having me. What's it like on the front line of the hard face of the cold handed well, justice? As you can imagine, Jeremy, well, as you can imagine, Jeremy, we are massively understaffed, in this, massively understaffed in this country. Every hour we can, uh, just we're to working try and every, every hour. The caseloads on our desks. Which must affect the quality of support. It must affect the quality of support. We can barely keep up with demand, Jeremy. There just simply isn't enough being done at a systemic level to relieve the problem. We need more support from ministers. We need more support from Ministers, what are you doing? <laughs> We need change at a oh, structural change. level, Jeremy. I'm leaving. Good time, time, darling. It never is, is it? I'll be at my mother's. It never is, is it? Just hang on. Just hang on. No, the, the problem isn't a local one, no, Jeremy. It's nationwide. Just it's nationwide. Five minutes. Just, just Jeremy Thomas. Oh, have you mentioned your affairs? No. Oh, have you mentioned your affairs? Well, no. uh, the affairs well, of the, the Justice Department that we should be concerned about. Hello, Mr. Donaldson. Hello, Mrs. Hello, Mr. Donaldson. We need... We need legislation we to need relieve the pressure on our public service. Sorry to interrupt the news, Mr. Donaldson. Can I have a moment to tell my husband I'm leaving? Can I have a moment to tell my husband I'm leaving? Totally understand. Yes. Quite the picture of a burdened legal sector there. Quite the picture of a burdened legal sector there. Thank you for joining us. Next, I'm joined by Police Chief Constable Bob Peel, a man with a very different perspective. You, Ellen. I would have expected this from your sister. I not from you. you. When are you going to realise I'm not her, Greg? Trust me, between the drinking and the arse, I'm very aware. Looking in through windows and generally enjoying the neighbours without the risk of being terrorised by some thug with a knife. Or cop. So you feel the streets simply aren't safe anymore? Where have we gone wrong, Bob? Where well, we that's wrong? not a simple question, Jeremy, oh, but I think it all comes down Jeremy. to moral decay. We've diluted our and lost touch with what it means to be a citizen of this once great country. Also, as the vicar noted in Sunday's sermon, we probably shouldn't have banned hanging. And to what do you attribute this moral decay? Foreigners, gays and gypsies mainly. It's all in the Bible. Look, Leviticus clearly states the... There's enough. Bugger, hang on a moment. Jeremy, you bloody gypsy escape. Delia? Delia, could you give me a little help, please, dear? A little help, please, dear? As I was saying, uh, Jesus didn't like immigrants saying, much, did he? Jesus and just to be clear, you think it's the immigrants who are responsible for the moral decay? Absolutely, Jeremy. Back in your box, Clive. Back in your box. Delia, I really could use a little help with this. I'm sorry, darling, I'm just playing the badges. Yes, I'm talking to Jeremy Donaldson. Clive, could you put him back in his box? Clive, you know it's Wednesday. Can they not give us this? And whose responsibility is it to make a change, Bob? Well, it is certainly not the responsibility of the decent, good, white people of this good, white people. Hold on just a moment. Clive, I am not having this again. Clive, I am not having this again. As I was saying, Jeremy, moral decay. Jeremy. Crime is the responsibility of the criminal. No one else. Look, everyone has a sob story, but we don't all end up as barbarians, do we? Look, when our daughter Alice comes home with an A minus, does she go on a killing spree? No, she takes three of her pills and hides under the stairs like a normal child. Thank you, Bob. Bob Peel there. Really locking down the police's position on morality. <coughs> I spoke to Mallory at the Bridge Club. I spoke to Mallory at the Bridge Club. She says the hall is absolutely fine for Sunday. Oh, so we did good, lah.
your child wants this Christmas. Oh, God, the kids have so fun. That's right, little one. You don't want to be left out. I'm just saying, we'll do my cows. Oh, shit, you will. She's good. You know she is. Shut up, little word. Here's all I can do. Ten seconds, everybody. Little Jakey's going to the big bad culture with water. If that sticks, I'll just Five, four, three. Welcome back. In our second session, we're going to be taking a deep dive into the state of law and order in our country. Advance have already tasked what they are calling a solutions team to move this serious social problem to the top of the list. Tonight, we go behind the headlines to meet the people who live with the criminal justice system every day of their lives. First up, we have Gregory Judge, a lawyer who sees the problems close up on the front line. Can you hear me, Gregory? Yes, I've got you, Jeremy. Thanks for having me. What's it like on the front line of the hard face of the cold hand of justice? Well, as you can imagine, Jeremy, we are massively understaffed in this country. Uh, we're working every hour we can just to try and cope with the caseloads on our desks. Which must affect the quality of support you can offer. Well, we can barely keep up with demand, Jeremy. Uh, there just simply isn't enough being done at a systemic level to relieve the problem. We need more support from ministers. We need more support. We need change at a structural level, I'm Jeremy. leaving, Greg. Not a good time, darling. It never is, is it? I'll be at my mother's. No, just hang on. Just hang on. No, the problem isn't a local one, Jeremy. It's nationwide. Just give me five minutes. I'm talking to Jeremy Donaldson. Oh, have you mentioned your affairs? No. Well, uh, the affairs of the Justice Department that we should be concerned about Hello, Mr. Donaldson. Hello, Mrs. Hello, Judge. Mr. We need uh, we need legislation to relieve the pressure on our public. Sorry service. to interrupt the news, Mr. Donaldson. Can I have a moment to tell my husband I'm leaving him? Yes, I totally understand. Quite the picture of a burdened legal sector there, Gregory Judge. Thank you for joining us. By Police Chief Constable Peel, <laughs> a man with a very different perspective on our nation's crime. Do you think there's a problem with the system, Bob? Do you think there's a problem with I'm sure we all do, Jeremy. I'm sure we all long for a return to the days when you could safely walk the streets of your community at night, looking in through windows and generally enjoying your neighbours without the risk of being terrorised by some thug with a knife. Or cosh. So you feel the streets simply aren't safe anymore? Where have we gone wrong, Bob? Well, that's not a simple question, Jeremy, but I think it all comes down to your old attack. We've diluted our and lost touch with what it means to be a citizen of this once great country. Also, as the vicar noted in Sunday's sermon, we probably shouldn't have banned hanging. And to what do you attribute this moral decay? Foreigners, gays and gypsies mainly. It's all in the Bible. Look, Leviticus clearly states that... Oh, bugger, hang on a moment. Jeremy, you bloody gimps is state. <laughs> Delia? Delia, could you give me a little help, please, dear? Uh, as I was saying, Jesus didn't like immigrants much, did he? And just to be clear, you think it's the immigrants who are responsible for the moral oh, yes. decay? Absolutely, Jeremy. Back in your box, Clive. Back in your box. Delia, I really could use a little help with this. I'm oh, sorry, darling. I was spaying the badgers. Yes, yes. I'm talking to Jeremy Donaldson. Clive, could you put him back oh, in his box? Oh, Clive, you know it's Wednesday. You put him back in your gift space. And whose responsibility is it to make a change, Bob? Well, it is certainly not the responsibility of the decent, good, white people of this. Oh, hold on just a moment. Clive, I am not having this again. As I was saying, Jeremy, moral decay. Crime is the responsibility of the criminal, no one else. Look, everyone has a sob story, but we don't all end up as barbarians, do we? Look, when our daughter Alice comes home with an A minus, does she go on a killing spree? No, she takes three of her pills and hides under the stairs like a normal child. Thank you, Bob. Bob Peel there, really locking down the police's position on morality. And finally tonight, hopefully uninterrupted, it's time to get to the heart of the matter. Tony Dawson has recently been released from prison. After serving three years for aggravated hearing test. Oh, did you? Yes, I did. Now, how's your idea? Yes, I did. Now, how's your idea? Which is also, I believe, his birthday. <laughs> Many happy returns, Tony. Many happy returns. Cheers, Jez. Call me Titwank, Tony. <laughs> Everybody else does. No, I'm not going to be doing <laughs> that. Can you tell us what it's like in prison, Tony? Titwank, Tony. Hey! Titwank, Tony. Prison's a mixed bag. 
structure is quite nice, but it's a constant battle against institutionalisation, as you can imagine. And obviously, titwanks are quite hard to come by. I'm picking up that you're not alone there, Tony. Titwank, Tony. Yeah, sorry, my friends are throwing me a surprise party. Good bunch of lads. Okay, well, we're trying that you get back to that party as soon as possible. First, let me ask you this. Do you feel that your time spent in prison helped to rehabilitate you in any way, Tony? Tit wank Tony! Hey! I don't think it's as easy as that, Jez. I don't think it's as easy as that, Jez. I think asking that is an oversimplification. It sounds like it's getting quite busy there, Tony, but uh, let's try and soldier on. Since leaving custody, have you been able to find a new job? Yeah, all the boys are here. Big Chris, oi, oi. little Chris, oi, oi. and Vampire Chris. Chris. One sec, love. Tip when Tony's on the news. Rehabilitation's difficult with the current system, Jez. It's just not set up for it, you know? It's inherently unjust. So, do you feel tempted to... I'm sorry, who's this now? You are joking. Chrissy Free Bollocks has only got Mr. Fancy, oh. It seems like we've caught you at a bad time. Oh, I can't really hear you, mate. It's getting a bit busy here. Yes, we uh, seem to be losing the signal no here, Tony. Fucking way, Las Bolitas! Well, we're just trying to get that signal back. I think we. Yes, Tony? Tony, I mean, we're literally away for two seconds. How has this happened, Tony? Can you hear me? Complex issues around law and order. After the break, Megan will be live with some plucky young thespians. Don't go away. We'll be back after these messages. One minute back, everybody. Well, well, piss off. Smooth, incisive journalism. I can have you fired! I, I ain't got long and I'm quite drunk. It's been a great night. In this next section, there's a bit of music. If you edit in time with the music, you can see the result on the vision mixer, and the public will love that. Don't worry if you don't know, you won't get punished for all or nothing. Just try and stay in the groove. Also, one last tip when the music starts, turn down the broadcast volume. Right, enjoy the music bit. God, I Music. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
and I think we're going to be showing us an extract from this play on here. That's right. This is a I say who's on a Yeah, thanks, Steve. Put it in, coach. Yes, thanks, thanks Steve. Steve. Put it in, coach. Yes. <laughs> right, well, I'm going to have a little chat with right, your well, teacher I'm while you run off and get ready. I can't wait to see it. That's it. Huh? <clears throat> <clears throat> so, Jeff, when did you first hear about Brown? Uh, two days ago. A letter from advance arrived at the school. Now, the headmaster thought it was all a prank, but his secretary retrieved it from his bin and brought it to me. Wow, how did you react? I also threw it in the bin. But then, Harriet and Trey rescued it, and uh, they, they, they rang the number at the bottom of the page, and next thing you know, we're on tour. Wow, well, I think we can all guess which way you'll be voting from now on. Do you know what it's funny? Because Angela and I don't usually vote. We were not very political. I'm a mathematician, of course. Awesome. She's a paraplegic, mainly. But we did used to watch that Peter Clements DIY show back in the day. And so we thought, uh, why not? Let's have a go with this whole democracy thing. Okay. And here we bally well are. <laughs> Good stuff. Fucking brilliant! So, let's have a look at a short so, section of have a look Hey, short Friendship. Hey. Dear Diary. Diary. I'm not sure I can take another day at this school. I'm not sure I can take another day at this school. Another day of tears. Yeah. Another day of tears. Another day of fears. 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 But still I walk the corridors alone. But still I walk the corridors alone. alone. Dreading what might be around every corner. What might be around every What's corner. around the corner? <laughs> What's around the corner? What's around the corner? Oh, hi Gary. Oh heavens no! It's Gary the Fist! Oh, heavens, no. Gary, Gary the, the fist. fist! Gary the Fist! Going somewhere, little first year! Somewhere, Great! First I've year. been looking for some Great. poor victim to bully all morning. Victim, but bully will this make morning. me feel better about my violent father? My violent father. Excuse me. I'm late for maths. Excuse me. It's my favourite subject. Maths. It's my favourite subject. Maths. It's my favorite so subject. important. What? Maths is for losers. My arm's stuck. Just, just keep going for fuck's sake. Right. Uh, right. Maths is for losers. Now, maths give me your lunch money. Now, give me double your lunch, lunch money. for me today, but double why am I only truly today. happy when I need it? Why am I only truly happy when I need it? Not today, Gary the Fist. Not today, Gary. What do you mean not today? Who are you? What do you mean not today? Who My arm's three coats. Brilliant, keep going. <laughs> right. Uh, Brilliant, keep going. Who are you to stand up to me? Who are you? I'm Gary the Fist. Oh, and you're just a sad little girl with two gay dads who's all alone. That's where alone. you're wrong, Gary the Fist. That's where you're wrong. These Fist. are my two new friends. These are Vanessa is friends. captain of the netball team. Yeah. Netball team. yeah. And Blake owns a motorbike. Yeah. And Blake yeah. Motorbike. But, yeah. But, but, but I can't fight all three of you. I can't and I don't have any of friends of my own. Take a look at me, take a little look at my face <laughs> I could be you, she could be you, and you could be me Or you could be me Life can be beachy cake If you work as a team Gary. 
free to fist. People think that folks like me probably shouldn't exist. But that's just prejudice, and I'd do better if you knew the way that I became Gary the Fist. I grew up on a council estate. The park was hip, but the flats weren't great. My dad used to come home drunk and late, and he'd hit my mum for dinner. He had to wait. Oh, where's my dinner? Oh, it's not ready. Oh, where's my dinner? Hitting women is wrong. Hitting women is wrong. I guess life's pretty hard on a council life's estate. Pretty life's, pretty pretty life's pretty hard on a council estate. 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 It's so damn hard on a council estate. That's all we have time for tonight on the National Nightly News. Join us tomorrow night for all the headlines from across the country. My name's Jeremy Dalton. I'm in a peace for And we're out. And we're out. What the little fuck was that? I believe that was art. I believe I've got a 14-inch cock. I think it's so. I have a...